Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make this fun little flippin' awesome card. We're going to be using products from Lawn Fawn, so let's go ahead and get started. So for cardstock, we're going to be using the Lawn Fawn Paper Bag 100 pound cardstock. And we're going to grab these dies here. This is the larger square die. This is the flippin' awesome mechanism. And then that little tab with the arrow. And again, this is from the Flippin' Awesome die set. So I'm going to take that square and I'm going to die cut four of these from the paper bag cardstock. And then I'm also going to die cut four more of these panels from the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. Now, grabbing this porthole die, this is the smallest one. And this is from the Porthole Frames die set from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to go ahead and center this on my paper bag cardstock. And I'm going to tape that down with a little bit of purple tape and run that through my die cutting machine. That's going to die cut the center out of there and give me that Porthole Frame as well. So you can see those there. And I did that for all four of these. Now I'm going to grab this stamp here, and this is from the Wood Grain Backdrops stamp set. I'm going to go also grab my Fiskars stamp positioner. And this has like little sponge feet on it. So when you put your stamp on there, you ink it up, you flip it over, and then you just press down, and that'll press your stamp right into place. I'm inking this up using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And this is a permanent black ink. I'm going to stamp this once. And then you can see I need a little bit more up at the top there. So I'm going to just ink up one edge of this stamp and stamp this again. And this platform just allows me to kind of move this big long stamp around exactly where I need it to be. So it's really easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for these other two. Now, with a one and a half by eight and a half inch piece of the paper bag cardstock, again in the 100 pound weight, I'm going to stamp this wood grain all the way across this. So I'm going to ink it up twice and then stamp it again here. And you'll see that it does leave a little area there where the two meet, but don't worry about that. We're going to fix that later. Now with Ground Espresso Distress Oxide Ink, I'm going to go ahead and ink up this panel. And where those little knots in the wood grain are, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker there. So just kind of random here, just adding a little bit of ink so we have some light and dark areas. And you can see that up close. Now for these little squares, I'm just going to go all the way around the edges. And you can see those all set there. Now for the portholes, I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Black Soot Ink. And for these, I'm just going to go right around the edges of the frames, just to give a little shadow there. And you can see that up close as well. That'll sit right inside that frame there. Now I've got a piece of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock that measures three and a half by eight and a half. So this is the standard size of a slimline card. So this will be our front panel. Now with the Gina K Masking Magic, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little mask here. So I'm going back to that porthole die that we used before. I'm going to run that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine, and that will give me a little circle. I'm peeling off the backing, and this is going to create a little sunset back here. So I'm just going to mask off where the sun is going to be. I'm going to push that down really well, make sure it's nice and secure. And then with that panel, I'm just going to mark with a pencil where that skyline is going to begin. So I'm using ripe persimmon and mustard seed in order to create my sky. And I'm just gonna do the mustard seed all the way across here, right, right up from that pencil line up. I'm just blending it out, and I'm gonna keep it darkest towards the uh, horizon there. 
So I'll come in with a little bit of the ripe persimmon and I'm just basically going to pat it on all the way down here, just loading it up with ink and getting a nice coating of that. Then I'm going to go back to the mustard seed and I'm just going to blend that out. I am going to add a little bit more of that ripe persimmon right around the sun there. And then I'll just blend that whole thing together. And this blends so beautifully, that ripe persimmon, I don't know, there's something about it that I just love. So you can see that we have that. Now I'm going to remove that mask and that will reveal the sun there. I want to give a little bit more color to that sun. So I'm going to place that applicator down and just turn it. I'm not moving it. I'm just turning it left to right. And then I'm just going to pat on a really light coating of that color around the edges of it very lightly. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the ripe persimmon, just putting it right in the center and turning it a little bit. And then just bringing in a little bit more of that mustard seed and blending that out. So just kind of play around with that till you get the look that you want. Now this is how my panel is going to sit. So I want to create that skyline on my panels here. Because what I'm trying to create is the look of the portholes, looking out from the boat into the water. So you'll see water on the bottom half and sky on the top half of the porthole. So I've got my four panels. I'm just going to tape those to my glass media mat with a little bit of Tombow tape here. And I'm just going to position those down. That tape will easily remove once we're done with this project. Now I'm taking my one and a half inch purple tape and I'm going to position it about halfway up. Just following the lines on the grid to make sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to tape that into place. That's going to act as the mask so that I can do the sky. So I'm going back to those same two colors we used before. And I'm just going to blend those out. Again, I'm just recreating that skyline. Doing the same thing with the ripe persimmon. And then without re-inking the mustard seed, I'm just going to blend those two together. So now I'm going to clean off this purple tape because I don't want to transfer any of that ink down into the water that I'm going to create below. So I'm going to clean that off. I do want to heat set this. If you don't heat set it, your tape won't stick to it. So you do want to make sure you heat set it. And then when I line up this tape, I want to leave a teeny tiny bit of that skyline showing just so the two blend together. With the water, I'm going to be using Wilted Violet, Salty Ocean, and Chip Sapphire. So I'm going to start with that Salty Ocean, and I'm not going to be fussy here. I'm just going to add little bits of color here and there. And I'm going to go to my next color. And then the chip sapphire, just a little bit of that, just to add a little bit more depth here to the water. And then once I've laid down those colors, I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer, which just has water in it. I'm going to spritz that. And that's going to give us kind of a splattered effect. Looks like the water. And I'm just going to add a little bit more here, just to get a little bit more up on the top of the water here, because that's really the only part that's going to show. Then I want to wipe off the purple tape again, and I'm going to set that tape aside because I can use that for another project. So those will sit right in there, and that's what it, the way it's going to look once we have it all assembled. Now I'm grabbing another set of stamps here to do all my little fish, and this set is called Ocean Shelfie. Now with this little set here, I'm going to grab a bunch of these little items, and this is the Ahoy Matey stamps set. And these stamps also have coordinating dies. So I'm going to put everything in my Mini Misty stamp positioner. I'm going to ink those up with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm going to stamp these. I'm going to stamp a few more of the coins, another of the little jellyfish. And I also did stamp that uh, little treasure chest as well. So I'm using purple and peach pink to color in this little octopus. And the peach pink is a brand new color for me, and it's just so pretty. I recently just added a few new colors to my collection just for a little variety. 
but you can add these individually. If you do own the sets, um, the, you can also buy these pens individually as well. So what I'm using here to blend these out is the blender pen. These are, again, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. It's a water-based marker, and the blender pen will allow you to blend the colors out. You could also use a water brush here, but I do find this works really well to get into these little areas. And when you want to change colors, you just clean it off on your scrap paper until it goes clear, and then you can change to the next color. And you can also remove color with the blender as well. So if you get too much color, you can just grab a little bit of color and scribble it onto your scrap paper until you get the shade that you want. So I finished coloring that in the same way. Now with violet and sugared almond pink, I'm gonna do the little jellyfish. And as always, I start with the lighter color, add that darker color, and then pull those two together. And I did the other jellyfish the same way. So with yellow and bright yellow, I'm gonna do this little fish here and the one up at the top there as well. And I am gonna add a little bit of pink to the cheeks here with the sugared almond pink. Now with oatmeal and yellow, I'm gonna do the coins and I'm not even going to blend these. I'm just going to give a little shadow there. With oatmeal and dark brown, I'm going to start to color in the treasure chest here. And I'm trying to keep that top part the lightest here. As always, all the products I'm using today will be listed below and also on my blog as well. I'm going to add a little black. Sorry, that's a little blurry there. I just couldn't get it to come into focus for some reason. But this is the black. And as I always say with the black, a little bit goes a long way. So just a couple little dots of the black and then pull that in. And I am going to add a little bit here to these straps and then a little bit in underneath the lid here as well. Now we'll color in the little pirate. So I'm going back to the two browns we used before. And then a little bit of black on the boot here and on the vest. And I'm also going to use that black on the hat as well. And I did color in the little skull and crossbones off camera with the light gray, just to add a little shadow in there. So I'm blending this up towards the top so it'll be lightest at the top here. And you can see I'm carefully adding the black because again, it, it goes a long way, so just a couple little dots and then you can always add more if you need to. Now with yellow and oatmeal, I'm gonna do his hair I'm adding the yellow and then I'll add the oatmeal for a little shadow. With the Persian blue, I'm gonna do his pants. Just keeping it the darkest up under his shirt. And then I'm using purple to do his shirt.
I'm adding a little sugared almond pink to his cheeks and then I'm using the flesh color to color in his face and hands. And I always forget to color right above the eye patch there. So I did later go back and add a little color there. I don't know why I always forget to do that. Now, again, with the sugared almond pink, I'm going to do this little um, shell here. And then with fluorescent green, bright yellow, and yellow, I'm going to color in the parrot. And I'm simply just adding little strips of color here, and then I'm going to blend them together. Nothing fussy here. And you can see those up close. I'm going to tape the coordinating guys to all of these little pieces and run them through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And now I've taken all of those pieces and laid them out on my panels here, kind of the way I want them to be. So I'm going to take my glue tube and I'm going to glue these into place. And you can see how those will sit right behind these frames. And I do want to keep everything flat here. So that's why I die cut the porthole right out of the frame rather than adding it. Because it is a flip card, I didn't want it to get too bulky there. So I just die cut this right out of that cardstock, the uh, paper bag cardstock, and you can see now it lays nice and flat. But we gave it enough dimension adding that black soot all the way around the edges. So you can see all my little panels up close here. Now I'm using a craft cardstock in a 65 pound weight. You could also use an 80 pound as well. And this is going to be for the flip mechanism. And you do want to use a little bit of a lighter weight here. Just makes it easy, easier for it to maneuver uh, the flip mechanism. So I'm going to fold all of these score lines in one direction. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to score them all in the opposite direction. That's just going to get this flip mechanism moving a little bit before we get started here. And then with the two little tabs, I'm going to fold those back. Now I'm going to start adding my tape. I'm using the quarter inch double sided tape. And I'm going to add it from that first score line down towards the bottom. So this square here, I'm going to put tape on. And then I'm going to remove the backing. And since we're doing a landscape card, I want to turn this on its side. And I'm just going to select the first panel that I want. This will be my back panel. This will be the last one. And then in between the next two score lines, I'm going to put two strips of quarter inch tape. And they're going to fit exactly in there. So right up to that next score line. You can see that there. And I'm removing the backing. And then I'm going to place the next panel on that left score line there. Now I'm going to place tape between the two score lines again. And you can see that there. And then I'm going to place the next panel on that left score line again. And I'm going to do the same thing for this last one right up to that last score line. And then position this one again on the left. So now we have all those lined up nicely. Now for the two little tabs, I'm going to add my tape on both sides. And then I'm just going to set this aside for now because I want to do that little uh, pull tab portion. So I'm going to grab that little arrow. I'm going to die cut that from some craft cardstock. I'm just adding a little bit of that ground espresso ink all the way around the edges. And then I'm going to add a little bit on this tab as well because I want that little arrow to be highlighted. So I thought if I made it a little darker, it'd be a little bit more noticeable. So I went ahead and attached that. Now I've got this panel here for the bottom of my card. And this is going to be the ship that the uh, pirate is standing on. So he's standing on the deck of the ship here. I'm adding my quarter inch double sided tape and I'm going to position that in place. 
you can see where that little line is where that wood grain met together where we did our stamping but you can see here now we're going to cover that we're adding our flipping awesome mechanism we're going to add it sort of to the right side of the card here and i want to line up the skyline with the skyline on the card so the little porthole skyline should line up with the skyline on the card and then i'm going to tape that into place and now you just want to double check that your little mechanism is working properly here and then I'm going to position these little pieces on on the boat as well. So I wanted it to look like the little portholes were on the boat. And as he was moving along, he was seeing these different little fish through the windows. And so that you could see the skyline and underneath you would see the water. Now I did position this little pirate down, but you can see there he was too close to my mechanism. So I did have to move him. So I carefully removed that tape and I was able to move him, him over a little bit. So now I'm going to pop up the little treasure chest here with a little bit of foam mounting tape. Now I just laid him down temporarily because I still want to double check this again to make sure he's not going to be in the way of that mechanism. I'm going to pop up one of these little clusters of coins here. And then I'm also going to pop up the little bird. Now I check, I'm checking that mechanism again. I'm going to add my foam mounting tape and then I'm going to position him down. And I just want to make sure he's not in the way of that. And then I am going to glue that bird right on top of the little treasure chest there. So I'm taking my Uniball Signo white gel pen. And I'm just going to add some highlights here and there. So the front of the card is going to say, you're a treasure. So I went back to the Ahoy Matey stamp set. I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm just going to stamp this. So this panel was attached to a standard slimline card, which measures three and a half by eight and a half. And I used the paper bag cardstock. So now on the inside, it will say Ahoy Matey, happy birthday. And then I did off camera stamp and die cut three more clusters of the coins and just put those on the inside of the card just to add a little bit of interest there. Now I'm grabbing these birds from the Life is Good stamp and die set and I went ahead and stamped those with black ink and attached those to my card. Now for the inside of the Flipping Awesome set, I wanted to add a gift card. So I'm die cutting this from some 65 pound craft cardstock, the same paper that I used to do the mechanism. I'm going to fold on all of these score lines here. I'm pressing those out with my bone folder. And I do wanna stamp this with that wood grain stamp as well. That's gonna sit right on the inside of this mechanism. So I'm gonna lay this flat I'm going to grab that die, I'm sorry, that stamp again, the wood grain stamp, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And then I'm going to add some ink to that, just like we did before. And this is the ground espresso ink. I need to add the quarter inch double sided tape to all of these little tabs. I'm going to remove the backing from that. And then I'm just going to tuck those in and put this in place. And you want to make sure you go a little bit underneath there, just a hair underneath, just so it doesn't get caught when you pull it in and out. Now I have a place for my little gift card. Now this was the color palette that I used today. And this is part of the Lawn Fawn Challenge, which you can check out on their blog. And I also have it listed on my blog as well and down below. So here you can see a closer look at the card. You can see that skyline matches the skyline in the background. And I have my little gift card in here as well. So it looks like the pirate is on his ship and he's moving along and seeing all these little fish are underneath the boat here through the portholes. 
This was so much fun to make. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Again, thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.